We have had this great musician on, one of the most talented and influential musicians in the music business today. He's been on our show several times. He's currently on tour with another leg of the Soul Circus Tour, and on his off day, he's going to spend some time with The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. How you doing, Victor? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. Now, it's raining awful hard. Have you traveled into Connecticut? Are you still still on the road? No, we are here. Enduring this heavy rain. Yeah, but I mean, you've been all over, all over the world, and seen so many s- situations in touring. So, old hat for you, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I still enjoy it. Right, right. I meant, I meant the weather and everything. That's old hat. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? I, I enjoy that too. Oh, cool. <laughs> the, the rain does not get me down, you know, because. Is necessary, and from what I understand, this part of the country needed some rain, so it's definitely getting it. So the Soul Circus CD, it's been out uh, the earlier part this year, and, and another amazing record, and and I believe it's about six years in between the last studio record, right? Uh, it wasn't that many, not six, but um, it was quite a few. For the solo one, I mean, yeah. Yeah, because the last studio record was the Yin Yang record. Right, right. Uh, and then Live Live in America came out after that. So it's been quite a few years. Uh, how how about... Yeah. How about uh, the c- current conglomeration of family and friends on tour with you? Who, who's in the band this time around? Yeah, I've got my brother Reggie on guitar. And I've got my brother Joseph on keyboards. And uh, for most of this tour, my brother Roy, Future Man, uh, the Future Man Project, is opening the tour, opening each show. So, so is uh, that's a lot of fun. And and he has a new album as well, right? You know, I, believe it or not, I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, he's always got some kind of new project going on. Always, but he's got a fun trio: a keyboard player and a guitar player, with him. And he's doing all kinds of fun stuff. How uh, about uh, sitting in the drums uh, seat? Is Dorico on, on tour with you? Yes, Dorico is playing with me on drums. And then I have MC Divinity doing vocals and raps and, and playing bass. And I have a girl from New York City, Sandra Williams, who's an amazing vocalist who sings on Soul Circus. She's with us. And my bass tech, Anthony Wellington. That's right. And he, and he's looking to put out a record uh, in the future, I guess, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. He is working on it. Now, uh, we just listened to, leading into uh, you coming on the show, uh, Victor, the opening track. But first we should talk about your son who makes his uh, appearance on there. And uh, it's really, if you go to victorwooten.com and click on Radio Wooten, uh, you can find out all the information about the Soul Circus, and I got to give you credit: excellent liner notes, lyrics included, and uh, also stories behind the songs. And, and your song, your son, uh, son makes his appearance right up there. Tell us about getting your son working on in the studio. I know there's a cool story behind that. Yeah, well, um, when he well he's four now, so when he was a little younger, before he could say the word guitar. He called it a tie tie, and uh, and so he used to play tie tie quite a bit, and then um, I guess somewhere around age three or three and a half, he got really interested in the drums, and uh, he pretty much doesn't play his tie tie anymore. And he plays mostly drums now, and he is an amazing drummer. I told him when he, I told him that when he turns five, I'll take him on the road. Oh, cool! I know he's gonna be bugging you for that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so he's getting himself ready. But he's actually playing very, very well. He's a really, really good drummer. And uh, and I can't even get him to say Tai Tai anymore. Now that he's a big boy, you know, uh-huh. he won't even say Tai Tai anymore. Well, well, there's a cool photo on there. and I, Maybe he had some P-Funk records on because he had, has a little Gary Diaper Man Scheider influence playing the guitar right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. a great photo of him in his diaper and frog boots playing as tie-tie right 
Now, now, something which is real cool because you know my wife and I recently moved to another part of Connecticut, and uh, we now we get BET Jazz on the cable network. I've been catching up on on some of your old uh, studio jams, some of those episodes. Um, have you done one of those in a while, or was that a while back? No, those were uh, you know at least a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. I did maybe three of them, and they're always fun because I get to play with musicians that I've never played with before. Right. Like Tuck Andrus, and just some amazing musicians. Uh, we got uh, a song we're going to get into right now, uh, which you put together on on various occasions. And I guess it was uh, kind of—I don't know if it's tough or it just took you a while to gather all these musicians on the bass tribute. Um, tell us about—I mean, so much history on that. Um, some of your favorite musicians on it. How, how'd you piece this one? Yeah, well, the idea was to pay tribute to some of the heroes before they pass on. A lot of times we don't really give someone their full credit until they die. And I didn't want to wait for that. The bass guitar is such a young instrument. I think the guitar right now is 50, the bass guitar is 54 years old. That's young. And what it means is that uh, most of the people who made the bass guitar, the electric bass, the people who made it what it is is still around. So I wanted to tr- talk about some of these people. And uh, instead of getting my heroes on the record, I decided to get my peers and uh, and have us all sing about our heroes. So I have people like, uh, you know, uh, O'Till Burbridge and Will Lee, Steve Bailey, Rhonda Smith, you know, us new generation of bass players, we're singing about people like Stanley Clark, Bootsy Collins, Larry Graham, Jaco Pistorius, you know, people like that. And not only do we sing about them, but uh, I, I imitate their playing mm-hmm. style. So when you hear Stanley's name, you hear a, a Stanley-esque bass line go by. So it's a lot of fun. And I, I will say this, too, because I was very happy about this. One of the bass players that I mentioned is a guy by the name of Robert Wilson. And I knew that when I named this person in the song that people wouldn't know who it was. And he was the young brother bass player of the Gap Band. Yeah, we just saw them a couple summers ago. Amazing group. Yeah, yeah. He and In 1979, he had a song called Shake. Mm-hmm. And he took a bass solo that just shook up the world, man. And uh, so we had to recognize him in this song. And in the latest issue of Bass Player, he gave me a compliment for recognizing him and talked about how appreciative he was because he said he's never been recognized for anything. And so that made me feel very, very good. And so I'm very, very, it made me feel very, very worthwhile for doing this song. And I got to give you your props for mentioning the first guy I, I ever interviewed from way, way back, Andre Simone, in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Andre's a funky brother, right? right. So, so let's give a listen to this right now. Victor Wooten is currently on tour, the Soul Circus Tour. Uh, tomorrow he'll be at Toad's Place in New Haven, prestigious club here in New Haven, Connecticut, on the campus at Yale University. And then heading up to uh, one of our favorite cities, Montreal, at the Spectrum. And the, all the dates are listed at victorwooten.com. This is bass tribute, and I believe you you layer three songs uh, in the middle of this, right? A little, little uh, contest for the fans out there. Yeah, in the middle, in the middle, you can hear Larry Graham, uh, a, song, a Larry Graham song, a Jaco Pistorius song, and a Stanley Clark song laid on top of each other. So you got to listen for it, see if you can find it. All right, Victor Wooten will come back and join us right here at the Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF. The funky track off the Soul Circus CD. It's on Vanguard Records. You can go to their website as well. And uh, Victor Wooten is our special guest. He's currently on tour, the Soul Circus tour. And uh, he seems, you know, we've talked to Victor while he's on the road. We've talked to him during sound check for the Flectones and then home at his own uh, home studio. But uh, right now he's going to be in Connecticut tomorrow. And also you're heading out to Japan with another great guitarist, Mike Stern, this uh, December. You guys have worked together quite a while, right? Yeah, I've worked, I've worked with, uh, with Mike quite a few times. I got the, the chance uh, to record with him on his, his latest current uh, CD, and it looks like I might get a chance to play on this next one too. He's just a, a fascinating musician, 
and uh, it's a joy for me because, you know, when I was very, very young and no one knew who I was, uh, I was listening to Mike Stern, you know, when he was with Miles and then when he had his own band. And now to get to play with him, you know, it's just a, a awesome, awesome thing. You did a, a record, uh, actually a book signing in uh, down south, I believe it was yesterday, right, or two days ago? Yeah, yeah. one in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Right. So this is the authorized Victor Wooten, me and my bass guitar. And tell, tell us about the writer and uh, how did you guys connect? Yeah, uh, it was written by a guy named Paul Hargett. That's a guy that I knew many, many years ago, um, back when I used to do a lot of martial arts. Um, Paul and I had studied with the same teacher. And, uh, and so I, you know, I, I loosely kept in touch with Paul. And, uh, and then one day, you know, he, he got a hold of me and came to a few shows. And he, was, he had written a book before. He had written a novel, and he was thinking about writing a sequel to that novel. And then, uh, but then he got an idea to, to write a biography. And he asked me if he could do one about me, and my first response was no. Well, why is that? Because, you know, well, I felt it was too early. You know, in my mind, I'm still young. And the guys that I learned from, like the names that I mentioned, Robert Wilson, Stanley Clark, Bootsy Collins, you know, Larry Graham, all those guys are still around playing. Mm -hmm. And there's no books about them. So I felt that there should first be books about them. They're the, they're the originals, you know. Okay, that's cool. Um, but, you know, he kept talking about it. And he, he, you know, he kept on me and... So finally I realized that, you know, you could pick anyone off the street and they have a story to tell. And if someone wrote a book about their life, it would be very interesting and we could all learn from it. So I thought, well, you know what, you know, if, if someone could really learn from this and, you know, and, and, and maybe even just have a little bit of enjoyment from the book and it might help them out in some way, let's go ahead and do it. Because I know that, you know, I do have an interesting story. I just felt it was a little early, you know, and I wanted to uh, pay tribute to some other people first. But I went along with it, and I'm really happy with the with the job he did on it. Well, I know with all the touring that you do um, throughout your career, and currently touring with Soul Circus, um, are, are there any plans to maybe a, a short documentary film of a tour and behind the scenes for your own solo tour? Well, we are hoping to. Um, we're, we're talking with, you know, Vanguard and trying to get them to do something like that because I think it's worth worth documenting. I think this is a great tour, a great band. Everybody's playing very well. Um, but stuff like that takes money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And it's money that I don't have in my pocket. Mm -hmm. So I have to get someone behind it who believes in it as much as we do. So we'll see what happens. Well, another song, I mean, they're... The, the coolest thing about Soul Circus is you, you got so many different flavors musically and you have a lot of special guests that work really well. Um, a song which is really impressive off the record, Prayer, um, which you were heavily influenced thinking about uh, your dad and his passing. Um, tell, tell us about the, uh, the songwriting with, um, you know, more to yeah. Well, my, my, my father passed away uh, on Christmas Day at my house in Nashville, Tennessee. And so I was right there, you know, and he, and he, he took his last breath in, uh, in my mom and my arms. And so that was such a, uh, a blessing and something hard to deal with at the same time. You know, in other words, you know, if my father was going to pass away, I was so glad I was right there that I could be holding him, you know, and that I didn't have to get a phone call. Mm -hmm. But, you know, things like that make you think. And so I started thinking about his life and how he lived it, the things that I learned, the things he taught me. And uh, and basically I just put it in a song, you know, and, and the, the gist of the song is simple. It's just to say a prayer for me and I'll say a prayer for you. No. And, uh, I think that's it. A good thing for all of us, you know. Good creed for all of us to live by. Uh, how about your dad? Was he a musician growing up? No, uh, he loved to sing, 
but he wasn't a musician. Uh, we found out later on that he always loved to play guitar, or he would he always wanted to. You know? So we, uh, you know, we got him a guitar, and he would strum it. You know, he couldn't play even a chord, but he'd just strum it and sing songs. You know, so it was a lot of fun. You know, getting him into that as we got older. So, so he was run, running. My parents were very musical, but neither one of them played an instrument. So, so they took you to all the gigs, the family, right? <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I mean, they were running the shuttle. Uh, they were running it all. I mean, they, you know, they booked the gigs. They collected the money. My mom made all the costumes and outfits. My dad was the bodyguard, chauffeur, bought the food, everything. You know, it was my parents were right there. But you have to remember, we were very, very young. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, like I was five years old, which would make Reggie thirteen, my oldest brother. So we ranged between five and. 13 when we started going out doing the nightclub scene and uh you know we opened for curtis mayfield and reggie says i turned six uh on that curtis mayfield tour and so was, you know we, we're very very young and you know and that but like my son that's on the record he's four about to turn five my daughter's about to turn eight i try to think about having them out on the road man yeah, it makes me realize uh, how special my parents were. Right. So are they currently on the road with you now, or are they back home? The kids are back home. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. We played in North Carolina the other night, and my mom came out to the show, so that was nice. Well, let's get into the track. We, we Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'll just say my kids are at home. Well, let's get into a track, and we'll be thinking of, about uh, your dad, Mr. Mr. Wooten, and this is Prayer off of Soul Circus. You can go to victorwooten.com, come out to the show, bring some extra money. They'll be sure selling the CD. It's on Vanguard Records, and Victor will be with his talented band in New Haven at Toad's Place and then up to Montreal at the Spectrum. And uh, we'll come back and uh, talk one more final time with Mr. Victor Wooten from Soul Circus right here at WVOF 88.5 in Fairfield, Connecticut. Joe Kelly here with The Upper Room. And uh, it's a real honor to have on once again on one of his rare off days. He's currently on the road playing in Connecticut at Toad's Place and the tour continues in Montreal and then a few more dates with with the band. This is the the second or third leg of the Soul Circus tour, right? That's correct. Yeah, uh the band I normally play with, Bale Effect and the Flectones, we decided to take this year completely off. Okay. Which has uh, opened up room for me to tour uh, exclusively with my own band. I've never been able to do that before, so we've been having a lot of t- a lot of fun. But, but you guys can't stay away from each other. I had Jeff Coffin on the night that you played in Philly, and he, uh, he told me he was going to guess with you later that night during your gig. Yeah, yeah, he sure did. Right, right. Yeah, his... his his whole thing came by. That was a lot of fun. Now, uh, we host uh, the last Sunday night of each month uh, a show at uh, Prince's MPG Music Club uh, dot com chat room. And uh, when your record first came out, we, we previewed a bunch of tracks during the show there. And they, they were going bananas with, with the CD. Um, they loved it. And uh, I know you played the celebration up there a couple years ago. And uh, tell us your experience about going up there to the I guess the house that Prince built, and what was that like? Yeah, it was a it was great, a great thing, like a treat, you know, like a dream come true. Because Paisley Park is a place that all musicians have heard about, and Prince, you know, being as, as secretive as he is, especially in the past, it was so nice to get to go there, and especially to be invited there to perform. Um, so it was it was a blast, and uh, I was there for three nights. So I got to see two other performances because each night there was a different band performing. Mm-hmm. So the first night was Sheila E. Then we performed, and the night after that, I got to see Nora Jones perform. And so it was great, a great experience. Prince was very sociable. You know, he we had free reign of Paisley Park, so we could walk around and go wherever we wanted. So we would just run into Prince, walking down the hall and things like that. So it was very, very nice. He was very easy to get along with during that time. Now, before it all said and done, it'd be real nice if you and him got in the studio to do something. That would be really special. Yeah, I kind of think it's going to happen. Right, um, right. You know, because uh, 
we've actually Prince and I have actually been in touch since that that show a couple of years ago, and we've actually talked about doing some things. So I hope it happens. Right, right. Well, what's really cool on we mentioned before on your own website, VictorWooten dot com. There's the story and the pictures and the lyrics behind all the songs on Soul Circus. And uh, right. one real cool picture, your mom and Bootsy Collins. W- was that at your studio? No, that was at a, a NAM show. A oh, okay. A NAM show, the, uh-huh. so, you know, the Music Merchants Convention. Um, that was happening in Nashville, Tennessee, and my mom just happened to be visiting. So I took my mom to the NAM show, and, uh, right. and Bootsy was signing autographs. And my mom just went straight up to the front of the line and just said, hey, you know, I don't mean to cut in the front, but, I'm, you know, I'm Victor Wooten's mom, and I just wanted to, you know, say hi. And he just got up and gave her a big hug, and, and so we got pictures of it. So it was great. Yeah. And the last two records you've had him on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bootsy's been a, a great help to me and a great inspiration. You know, I mean, a lot of what I do... It's possible because of Bootsy Collins. Now, now, one thing I was reading, I'm not sure where I read this, um, maybe it was the story behind one of the songs, but um, you were talking about, you you were playing at, at a, a bass concert, or, ba- you know, one of the, the conferences, and, and you know people are expecting one of those pyrotechnic, amazing solos, which you, you've been known for, but you brought to one of those shows something real mellow, in it, and, you, and you wrote a song about it, right? Yeah, that song um, that I ended up playing that night is on the Soul Circus CD, and it's called Ari's Eyes. Mm-hmm. But uh, this was a bass, uh, might have been called Bass Day. One of the big shows they have up in New York pretty frequently, and I was invited to play by myself. You know, like you said, I knew people were going to expect me to just come out and do a lot of thumb stuff and tear the bass apart. But I wanted to do something different. So I came up there and I played this very, very slow, mellow tune that I had just come up with the day before. Because I'm a last-minute type of person. And uh, and I, I, needed, I wanted something to go there and, and surprise people with. So the day before, I came up with this melody. And I thought, okay, that's going to be cool. I'll just you know improvise and play around with it during the show. And that's what I did. And it came off so well that I said, "Wow, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna do something with this." So pretty soon after I went back home, I, I went in the studio. <coughs> excuse me, I went in the studio and recorded the basic tracks for it. And I, it was later that I added, you know, Howard Levy on the uh, harmonica and, and a few other instruments. But I liked the way it came out. And I, I named it after my my youngest daughter, mm-hmm. Ariana. Now, another song off the record, which you, you turn into uh, one of your hardest rocking songs, Higher Law. And, and yeah. yeah, I mean, you recorded what you said. You recorded a, a bunch of other throughout your career, some some harder read songs. But, uh, man, great to break that out. Do you, do you play it in the live set? Yeah, we do. We play it almost every night. And that's that's the song where we let my brother Reggie just go crazy on the guitar. Uh-huh. I mean, that's like his his song and his segment of the show, and, and he just goes crazy. Um, but I like that song for its hard edge to it, you know. And it's pretty much the first song I've ever put on a record like that. Um, and so, you know, and it comes off very, very well live, you know, because of, with my brother Joseph and, and then uh, Sandra and Divinity Sing helps him sing it, you know, it's really full and with Reggie's guitar, you know, it's just pretty awesome. Tomorrow night at Toad's Place in Connecticut. Uh, have you ever played Toad's over there? Uh, I've played Toad's, but not with this band. I've right. played many, many years ago with the Flexings. Got got all that history. Not necessarily the plushest dressing rooms, but it's got all that history. <laughs> it yeah. does have history, that's for, that's for sure. Right. And uh, come up and see Victor on tour, the Soul Circus tour. He'll be at the Spectrum in Montreal. All the rest of the dates on his website, victorwooten.com. And uh, if you're out in Asia and Japan, uh, he'll be with Mike Stern and, and your own band out there as well, right, for some of the dates? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. How about uh, looking into 2006? A- anything on schedule? Well, we start with the Flectones in January, so we're starting first thing. We have a brand-new Flectone CD coming out and a lot of touring uh, um, 
we're doing this jam cruise that's happening in January with a bunch of other bands. So that'll be fun. I've never been on a cruise. Mm-hmm. And our flight towns have a lot of fun things in store for 06. All right. Thank, thanks, Victor, for taking uh, time. I, I know you're real busy. And, you, you know, thanks for stopping by the Upper Room, Joe Kelly and WVOF. Joe, thank you very much for having me on and supporting my music. I appreciate it. You got it. Continued support and love. So thanks, Victor. We'll go out with uh, Higher Law, and uh, we've got more music from Soul Circus. We're going to hear Can't Hide Love, and uh, go see Victor on... Mm-hmm.